Hey, this is Joe from Personas, and today we're going to talk about a big old doubling mistake. So I just did a video recently on some common mixing mistakes, and one of those was uh, to take a track and double it and then pan it to one side to achieve kind of an in-the-middle sort of panning. And I talked about how that's the same as just panning the first track and turning it up a little bit. Um, because a lot of times folks are doubling tracks to accomplish things that, that really were, are better accomplished a different way. One of the common comments that I saw was people saying, well, if I want to get kind of a wider sound, like a stereo doubled wide sound out of a track, I can just duplicate it, pan one left and one right, and then just slightly delay one of the tracks. I've done it before, I understand the appeal, let me show you why that doesn't work. Okay, here is an acoustic guitar in the breakdown section of a song, and I've just got the guitar soloed for now. So let's say we want that to be big and wide. We've just got a mono track, how can we make that big and wide without like reverb? Well, we can duplicate the track, we could duplicate it completely, and we can take this duplicated track and we can zoom in and we can say, let's just delay this one by a little bit. Not, not an exact science, but just move it off a little bit and we'll pan that one to the right, we'll pan the first one to the left. Let's see how that sounds. Now, the first time you do that, you're going to say, oh, I've discovered like the holy grail of how to get wider guitar sounds. The problem is you've taken the exact same audio and delayed one of them, which does give a difference in sound, which creates that stereo sound we're looking for. But listen to what happens when I move it into mono, when we listen to it when they're summed back together. I'm going to click the mono button down here. Take a listen. You hear that? It kind of has this weird metallic sort of sound. And depending on if you move it, let's say you only move it over a little tiny bit, maybe not quite as much as we did at first, something like that. Listen to what it sounds like. So initially you think when it's stereo, you're like, oh my goodness, that's the best. Then you bring it down to mono and you hear there's so much phase cancellation happening um, because it's the exact same piece of audio. And so in the middle, when it was in mono, it had this, it's like the guitar lost all of its goodness and had this weird metallic kind of thing happening. versus just the one guitar by itself. We've made it just sound worse. It does not sound better, it sounds worse. There's some weird low end buildup um, that makes things sound money when we add money, money, muddy when we add the second guitar and then there's this high frequency sort of metallic sound that comes in as well. Here it is one more time. Almost sounds like a robotic acoustic guitar, if that makes sense. Now you may be thinking, okay, who cares, Joe? I'm mixing in stereo, so it's gonna sound like this. Why does that matter? Because most of our listening environments are gonna be some version of more mono than stereo. In your car, you're not really hearing true stereo. You hear it a little bit, but a lot of the sounds are getting blended together in more of a mono sound. Even listening to speakers, once you're across the room, you lose a lot of the stereo width and you're just hearing it as one sound, which means the one sound you're gonna hear is these two combined and it just doesn't sound as good. Um, it, you, it, it just doesn't sound as good. Here's what I would suggest instead. Let's delete that track and never see it again. I would suggest recording the guitar two times, then panning one of them left and one of them right. Now, someone asked in the comments, wouldn't that just be the exact same thing as physically duplicating the track and panning them left and right? And the answer is no, because I'm a human. I can play the exact same part two times, and there are going to be slight variations in the timing and the tone of what I play. I'm not going to hit it right on the downbeat. As you can see here, this one's just a little bit behind the beat. This one's just right on the beat. Um, they're going to sound good together, but there's going to be 
all these variations in the timing and then also variations in the overall tone. The mic is not going to be, the guitar is not going to be in the exact same position uh, because that's not really possible. So there's going to be slight variations and that is going to create this spread and because they are so different you won't you usually won't have any of those phase issues that you would have with the other solution that I showed you. So take a listen to how these sound when I hit play uh, and how nice and wide and great they sound. To me it's way wider or at least as wide as the fake double that we did, but they also sound like two distinct parts being played and it sounds way better combined together. Now let's do the mono test. Let's flip it into mono and it should still sound like big full guitar. Now, obviously, I prefer the stereo. It sounds better. Anytime you fold everything to mono, you lose a little bit of volume. That's just the nature of the beast. But it sounds great in mono, and then it sounds amazing in stereo. That's what I want. I don't want to sacrifice one or the, or the other, and I don't want to have to always be worrying that there's some weird phase thing happening because I duplicated the exact same track. All right, that's it for this video showing you a very common doubling mistake. Now, there may be people who have managed to pull that off if you delay this one enough. Maybe it works. Maybe there's a few situations where duplicating and moving sounds better. I have not found one, and I've been in situations where I've been mastering a song where they did this to an extreme level, and the song sounded weird. It made you want to turn your head sideways because there was such a phase difference between the left and the right speaker. It was almost exactly out of phase. Actually, let me show you what it sounded like um, because I think that's going to be helpful to kind of really demonstrate what I'm saying. Uh, so I'm going to get rid of this one for a second. So here's the two... Here's two of the exact same again, right? It sounds mono because it's the same exact thing. Let's take the bottom one and let's, uh, let's flip the polarity of it so it's out of phase. That's that out of phase sound that I'm talking about. It feels like one speaker's pushing on this ear, another speaker's pulling on this ear, and it makes me want to turn my head sideways. That's what can happen when you start jacking around with the same exact piece of audio and trying to pretend that you've got a double. All the time you spend doing that, you might as well just record it a second time and make it sound like this. To my ear, that is way more interesting um, and sounds way better, and it's more fun to do because you've got really a legitimate double. Just because I'm sure you're tired of hearing that same part over and over, here's what that whole section sounds like in context of the song. No one is a All right, that's it for this video. That is a song by me called Listen. Look it up on iTunes, Spotify if you want to hear the whole thing. Thanks for watching. Don't make this doubling mistake. And if you do, I still love you. But don't. All right, thanks for watching. See you in the next one. <laughs>